Hi and welcome to C Programming for Arduino, a step-by-step -step guide. Previously we have discussed about L values and R values. Let's discuss further. Bucket analogy is used to make it easy to remember the details about L values and R values. Suppose you have a bunch of different sized buckets lying around. Each bucket is just big enough to hold a specific number of bytes of data. Some buckets can only hold one byte of data, whereas others can hold two bytes. Still others can hold four bytes and so on. According to this table, you can see that a one byte bucket could hold a boolean data type, character data type, unsigned character data type, or byte data type. A 2 byte bucket could hold an integer data type, unsigned integer data type or a word data type. A 4 byte bucket could be used for a long data type, unsigned long data type, float data type or double data type. Let's further assume you have a whole room filled with these various sized buckets. Now consider the following program statements. These are the same statements as we discussed earlier. The first statement fails in the symbol table information as we discussed earlier. However, in bucket analogy, the first statement can be thought of as determining the size of the bucket and where to place that bucket in the memory. The second statement means that we go to variable val's bucket location at memory address 20200 and pour two bytes of data into the bucket with the data arranged in such a pattern as to form the value 10. This figure also shows a 1 byte bucket stored at memory location 20000 with a minus sign character stored in it. The bucket stored at memory address 20000 is only half as big as the bucket used to store variable well. The bucket analogy provides the following three conclusions. The size of a bucket depends on the data type being stored. Where the bucket is stored in memory is the data item's L value. The contents of the bucket is the data item's R value. Look at this piece of code. The first statement defines the variable well and puts value 10 in it. The second statement defines a new variable sum. It should also be clear that the last statement in this code fragment uses L values and R values. In the last statement, the compiler goes to the symbol table and finds the L value for variable well. It then uses the memory address or val's l value to fetch val's 2 byte bucket. Now that both operands are available, the assignment operator causes the compiler to pour the contents of val's bucket into the sums bucket. This process therefore replaces whatever may have been in sums bucket with the contents of val's bucket. Note that all simple assignment statements move the contents of the bucket on the right side of the assignment operator into the bucket of the operand on the left hand side of the assignment operator. It should also be obvious that all simple assignment statements move the right operand's R value into the left operand's R value. Consider the following statements. The first two statements create buckets for variable well and variable big well and place them somewhere in the memory. As a part of its definition, big well also initializes its R value to 1 lakh. Now consider what happens in the last statement. Simply stated, this statement grabs the variable big well bucket and tries to pour 4 bytes of data into 2 byte bucket. Doing this runs a risk of losing 2 bytes of information because variable wells bucket is too small to hold all of the variable big wells data. Because data type of variable well is integer which take 2 bytes of memory and data type of variable big well is long which takes 4 bytes of memory. While 1 lakh is a numeric value that is easily handled by a long data type, but the value is much too big to store in well. Two bytes of valuable information are going to dribble onto the floor. Even worse, the Arduino C compiler does not even complain about the assignment. As a result, variable well now contains some bogus value that will likely cause you problems in your program later on. Clearly, this was just a bad design by the programmer who should have known that one lakh won't fit into an integer data type. However, suppose variable big well was initialized to 20 rather than one lakh. Now the value can be stored in an integer variable. Of course, the compiler still won't complain, especially now that the value is small enough 
to fit in both data types. Even so, two data types of data are going to be slopped on the floor during the assignment. This is also not the right way to transfer values between variables of different data type. So what is the proper way to fix this? The fix is to use the cast operator. The cast is used to force one data type into another data type. If we want to fix our big well assignment when its value is 20, then we can use the cast in the following manner. The cast operator in this statement is integer. To use a cast, simply place the data type you want between the opening and closing parentheses. The data type of cast operator must match the data type that is to receive the results of the cast. That is, if you are assigning a value into the integer, then the cast must also be an integer. The cast operator must be placed immediately in front of the data item that is to be cast into the new data type. In this example, the cost or integer must appear immediately before big well. Suppose later in the program code we see something like this. Does this need a cost? Technically no, it does not. The reason a cost is not needed in this example is because you are trying to pour the contents of a 2 byte bucket into a 4 byte bucket. Because the receiving bucket is bigger than the sending bucket, there is no risk of spilling data on the floor. No compiler complains about this type of mismatched data assignment. Although the code is implicitly changing an integer to a long data type. In other words, the compiler is casting the data without telling you about it. This is called silent cast because there is no indication that the cast is taking place. Silent casts can also cause problems later in the program. So it is recommended that you use cast even in such data mismatching cases. Now our statement will look like this. The Arduino compiler does not complain about either noisy or silent casts, which is a bug for the noisy cost. To be on safe side, always use the cast operator when performing an assignment expression involving two different data types. It will save your time in the long run. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Take care and goodbye.